In England, Joseph Grimaldi became the forerunner of the modern clown tradition. He was an English actor, comedian and dancer, who expanded the role of clown in the harlequinade that formed part of British pantomimes. As Commedia dell'arte was moving throughout Europe, clowns wore shoddy clothes and naturalistic makeup. Grimaldi changed clowning forever, replacing the naturalist look with the grotesque. He became so dominant on the London comic stage that the harlequinade role of clown became known as Joey. Both the nickname and his white face makeup design are still used by other types of clowns. Jean Gaspar de Bureau was a bohemian French mime. He performed from 1816 to the year of his death at the Théâtre de Funambles and was considered one of the most perfect actors. His most famous pantomimic creation was Pierrot, a character that served as the godfather of all the Pierrots of romantic, decadent, symbolist, and early modernist theater and art, rejuvenating the type and recalling the Pedro Lino of the Commedia dell'Arte. He was immortalized in Marcel Carnes' 1945 movie, Les Enfants du Paradis. The actor Jean-Louis Barault plays the role of de Bureau, that appears in the film under his stage name, Baptiste, as a major character. Paul Legrand was a highly regarded and influential French mime. He turned the Pierrot into the tearful and sentimental character that is most familiar to all admirers of this figure. He was the first of the Parisian mimes of his era to take his art abroad. He traveled to London, Paris, Cairo, and Rio de Janeiro. In the last years of the century, he was a member of the Circle Funambulesque, a theatrical society that promoted work, especially pantomime, inspired by the Commedia dell'Arte. George Lafayette Fox was an American actor and clown who became known for his pantomime roles. He popularized the Grimaldi style of violent slapstick and topical satire on the American stage. Inspired by the French Ravel troupe of comic acrobats, he created a distinct place for that kind of entertainment in New York City. He invented the character Humpty Dumpty, once described as half-boss Tweed and half-crazy cat. He was considered by many to be the funniest man of his time. His white face character became an important part of American popular imagery, used in advertisements and children's books, long after his death. Felicia Mallet was a French comedian, singer, and pantomime artist. Her performances with the Circle Funambulesque launched her into stardom. Her style of pantomime was more human and natural than the traditional blank face style. La Belle Otero was a Spanish actress, dancer, and courtesan. She had a reputation for great beauty. When she moved to France, she created her character, an Andalusian gypsy. She was very popular also because of her many love affairs. Colette was one of the great personalities of her time. Besides being a prolific writer, author, and journalist, she was also a music hall actress. Often naked during her performances, several times she was at the center of scandals for her uninhibited romantic relationships with some worldly personalities, of both sexes, of French society. As a mime she performed also with George Weig. George Weig was a French mime, teacher, and silent film actor. He created a new artistic expression, the canto mime. It began in 1893 at the Café Procope where he performed with a singer and piano. Most of the time, his character was Pierrot, but he soon started to look for a more human kind of character. Jacques Copeau was a French theater director, producer, actor, and dramatist. According to Albert Camus, in the history of the French theater, there are two periods, before Copeau, and after Copeau. He wanted to move the theater to a simpler style, freed from the ornamentation that obscured even the finest texts. Suzanne Bing was a French actress. She was a founding member of Jacques Copeau's Théâtre du Vieux Colombier, in Paris. Her ability helped Copeau in his understanding of various techniques, such as improvisation and music-based movement. Her interest in improvisation and masks inspired many of her students, like Etienne de Croix. Harpo Marx was an American comedian, actor, mime artist, and harpist. He was the second oldest of the Marx brothers. In contrast to the mainly verbal comedy of his brother, Harpo's style was visual. An example of both clown and pantomime traditions. He wore a curly reddish blonde wig and was silent in all his movie appearances. 
there is not much that needs to be said for this amazing artist. Charlie Chaplin is a worldwide icon. His main character, the Tramp, is considered one of the film industry's most important figures. Besides being an actor and filmmaker, he was a composer. He rose to fame in the era of silent movies. His career spanned more than 75 years, from the Victorian era, until a year before his death, in 1977. Irene Moore was an English exponent of education of mime, drama, and voice. She was a co-founder of the Jinner Moore School of Dance and Drama together with Ruby Jinner, and sole founder of the Institute of Mime. Harold Lloyd was among the most influential film comedians of the silent film era. His films frequently contained thrill sequences of extended chase scenes and physical feats. Lloyd hanging from the hands of a clock. It looks dangerous, but the risk is exaggerated by camera angles. It is considered one of the most enduring images in cinema. Buster Keaton was an American actor, comedian, and filmmaker. His trademark was physical comedy, accompanied by a stoic, deadpan expression. Therefore his nickname was The Great Stone Face. Etienne de Creux is considered the father of modern mime. He developed corporeal mime into a highly sculptural form, taking it outside the realms of naturalism. He was a French actor, who studied at Jacques Copeau's school, where he saw the beginnings of what was to become his life's obsession. Corporeal Mime During his long career as a film and theater actor, he created many pieces, using the human body as the primary means of expression.